It's getting to the point that I really don't understand how Sony can be fumbling things this badly. Now, look, I understand some people feel like I talk negatively about Sony too often, and I got to be honest, I don't enjoy it. I mean, on the positive side, Demon Souls looks absolutely fantastic. So did Final Fantasy 16. So has pretty much every game Sony has shown off that they are counting as part of their exclusive library, although not console exclusive for everything. Kind of reneging on that. But again, it's even hard to talk positively about that and not bring up a negative because Sony just keeps taking the goodwill they've built up during this last uh, generation when they had to build up a lot of goodwill. Because after all, they really kind of got too cocky or too full of themselves, I guess, during the PlayStation 3 era. Uh, and they humble, they seem to humble themselves anyways, right up in, in the PlayStation 4 era until we got to the point where they were really fighting against cross-saves. And I get it, Microsoft fought against cross-saves the gen before. I understand. But we're here in 2020, and PlayStation 5 is sold out. It's sold out everywhere. It's going to be very, very hard to get one this year if you don't have a pre-order. Uh, no one knows that when the next shipments are coming or how much of the next shipments are coming. Okay, that's all fine and dandy. Great news. But now Sony is going to their consumers and essentially telling them, ha, F off, give us your money. Oh, you have this game on PlayStation 4? F off, we want even more money out of you. Let me explain after I remind you of our giveaways. We're actually giving away a PlayStation 5 or an Xbox Series X or a Nintendo Switch. Uh, details on that are down in the description as well for that big giveaway. We're also giving away two copies. That's right, two, 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 two copies of uh, Pikmin 3 Deluxe as well. Again, go down in the description to find out how to enter for that. All right, so I am on Kotaku, and I, I don't go to Kotaku very often. Uh, but they talk about how, uh, you know, this headline says, you know, Sony confirms there's no free PlayStation 5 upgrade for PS4 Spider-Man players. This has been a point of controversy ever since the Ultimate Edition was announced. For those who don't know, the Ultimate Edition of Spider-Man Miles Morales is $70, which turns out is the standard price for, like, uh, you know, major AAA games on a PlayStation 5. And it looks like it's going to be the standard price on Xbox Series X as well, to be fair. Third parties are also charging uh, $69.99 on Xbox. We haven't seen a confirmed uh, first-party game from Microsoft uh, release at that price point yet. But anyways, the Ultimate Edition is different than the Standard Edition. Standard Edition is just $49.99, and you get you know Spider-Man Miles Morales. If you spend uh, $69.99 on the... Uh, ultimate edition you get a remastered you know what they claim is a remastered version of the playstation 4's marvel's spider-man now we don't know much about this remastered version we presume longer draw distances we presume it's a lot like the old demo they showed of that game on playstation 5 faster loading bigger draw distances higher resolution higher frame rate it's honestly a lot of what we're going to see with upgraded last gen games in current gen in fact uh, you know, we're, we're going to see this with a lot of uh, Microsoft games as well. Uh, pretty much a lot of these old gen games are going to be upgraded. But uh, there's some PlayStation 4 fans that are pretty pissed off because one, there's no cross saves. So even if you spend money and you buy this remastered version, you cannot carry your save over from your old Spider-Man game, which means you lose all of the progress that you made already and have to start over again as if it's a new purchase now for me it doesn't matter as much because i didn't play the first one so obviously getting the ultimate edition is not that bad of a deal for me but here is what uh sony had to say about this interesting situation because you get a free upgrade with miles Morales, but you don't for spider-man here's what Mar here's what uh sony had to say on this marvel's spider-man remastered is an enhanced version of marvel's spider-man and is included as part of the Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales Ultimate Edition for the PlayStation 5. In addition, players who purchase Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales on PlayStation 4 can upgrade at no additional cost to the PlayStation 5 version of Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales, and can take advantage of a paid upgrade to download Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered. I assume it would be like 20 bucks. There are no plans currently to offer Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered as a standalone. Players with a copy of Marvel's Spider-Man for PlayStation 4 can purchase Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales Ultimate Edition to experience Marvel's Spider-Man Remastered on PlayStation 5. Marvel's Spider-Man for PlayStation 4 will also be backwards compatible on PlayStation 5. So what they're saying is, you can play your copy of Marvel's Spider-Man from your PlayStation 4 on your PlayStation 5, but you will get none of the PlayStation 5 remastered, you know, version updates. What they're telling you is, if you buy, think about what they just said, if you buy Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is on PlayStation 4, 
if you buy that, you get free next gen upgrade, right? You get all the next gen, you know, perks and, and higher resolution and frame rates and all that jazz for free. But if you own a copy of Marvel Spider-Man, you do not, I repeat, do not get the next gen upgrades for free. You have to pay money. You either have to buy the, you well, not either. You have to buy the Ultimate Edition. You don't have a choice. To get the upgraded version, you have to spend $70. Think about what, 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 what Sony's telling consumers here. We have already seen Microsoft and several other companies say, hey, look, we're going to give you, you know, if you own this game on PlayStation 4, you get next-gen upgrades for free. Witcher 3. Guess what? CD Projekt Red is giving you next-gen upgrades for free. This is becoming very common practice with many companies heading into the next gen. Oh, backwards compatible. Hey, if we add 4K, 8K textures, we we add, we add bump the frame rate, we bump the draw distance, mess with the settings a little bit. Guess what? We're going to give you all that next gen goodness for free if you already bought our game. Not Sony. Sony is telling you, day one, our primary launch game has a version of a PlayStation 4 bestseller that's better. And if you own the original, you don't get it for free. You have to spend $70 if you want to play that. They're not like, I get the whole not releasing it as standalone, which to me is just utter BS to not even have it available as a $20 option. But this to me is baffling. Sony continues to compile anti-consumer after anti-consumer after anti-consumer thing. And they're able to do this, and they're going to get away with this because Sony's got the games, guys. We always talk about Nintendo and how critical I can be of them. But Nintendo gets a lot of leeway. They get away with a lot of bad practices. Their Nintendo Switch Online has a lot of bad practices associated. The NES and SNES apps aren't as good as they should be. And where are the Hex N64, GameCube, Game Boy Advance, all the stuff, DS? Like, we, we don't have, like, there's so much more. You know, look at what they did with 3D All Stars, right? I know, love it or hate it. I'm not trying to, like, argue, you know, one way or the other. I own a copy of the game. But the point I'm trying to make here is when you look objectively, at what Nintendo does, that they have some anti-consumer practices as well. But they get away with it because, you know what, it's worth putting up with those practices to play games like Super Smash Bros. Ultimate or to play like Splatoon 2 online. Like, the games they have are so good, just so good, that we're okay with the anti-consumer practices. We just are, frankly, okay with them because, in exchange, we get a lot of great content. And that's what Sony's at now. Sony is at the point where their game output is almost as big and selling as well as Nintendo game output. No, not quite there. Nintendo's got multiple, you know, 20 plus million sellers on their hands right now. But the point is, is that Sony's getting there. They have a lot of franchises hitting 10 million or higher in sales. So Sony is getting there with the number and the quantity and the uh, sheer goodness of these games, right? Sony is delivering the goods with games and locking in exclusivity contracts with like Square Enix for other good games. So Sony got to the top of the mountain because Sony's at the top. When it comes to home consoles, they're at the top. They've been at the top pretty much since the PlayStation 1. They got there by locking in exclusivity deals for exclusive games from third-party developers and then eventually having their own studios and buying a few studios here and there. But the point is they, they got to the top by, by having these exclusivity contracts and, and, and paying you know, many, many millions of dollars to make games exclusive. And they're still doing that to this day. One reason why I, you know, I see a lot of Sony fans critical of the Bethesda purchase, don't, I mean, yeah, Bethesda was, was completely bought out, but Sony's been buying out individual games forever, and that's it's how Sony got to where they are. So, honestly, Sony gets a pass from many people, and the PlayStation 5 is going to sell phenomenal. I'm still trying to get one. I want to play their games. They end up getting a pass for these anti-consumer practices because they got the games. We'll put up with these anti-consumer practices as long as you can bring us the games. And it's a sad mentality we have as gamers, and I have it as a Nintendo fan, that we could just let these companies get away with anti-consumer-like practices because they give us what we want when it comes to playing video games. In this case, they're not giving fans what they want. Oh, we want Miles Morales. Oh, we get a free upgrade for Miles Morales, but we can't get a free upgrade for for, for the prior Spider-Man game. Why is that? Why do why do Spider-Man 
uh, PlayStation 4 players have to pay $70 to get an upgraded version of their game. Yeah, I get that it includes Miles Morales, but what if you don't want Miles Morales? What if you just want to continue your adventure and you don't even have cross-saves? The Witcher 3 on Nintendo Switch has cross-saves between PC and Switch. You can't have cross-saves between PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5. They're your own platform, Sony. These are your own platforms. You own them, and you can't have cross-saves. So you don't have cross-saves, and you're making people spend 70 bucks to be able to, to to play the better version of the game. I get that it's backwards compatible. I get that you'll be able to play the original Spider-Man game on a PlayStation 5. You'll be able to play all your PlayStation 4 games for the most part on your PlayStation 5. Same with the Xbox Series X in terms of playing Xbox games. So that's great. But there's upgrades. And you don't get to enjoy those upgrades without paying a fee. Sony's going to continue to do this, by the way. They're going to bring us The Last of Us and The Last of Us 2 remastered on PlayStation 5, just like they did on PlayStation 4. And they're going to charge for it. They're not going to give you free upgrades. We know this because Sony's already doing it with Spider-Man. They're not going to give you free upgrades. They're going to charge you again and again and again. Sony is going to keep running their business the same way they've always ran their business. And again, the reason this feels anti-consumer the reason it does isn't just because there's backwards compatibility. It's because, well, Microsoft is giving it to you for free. And Sony doesn't think they can compete. Sony already openly admitted, we can't do Game Pass because our games cost too much to make. It seems like a bad excuse, but what they really mean is Microsoft loses millions and millions and millions of dollars on Game Pass. We can't afford to lose it. And Sony can't. They don't have the money to burn like Microsoft. So they can't afford to burn money for potential future profits. They have to worry about current profits. So to Sony's credit, I get why they can't offer a Game Pass-like service. But they can't offer free upgrades? Really? They can't? Are they afraid that like the Spider-Man Miles Morales Ultimate Edition won't sell? There's, there's going to be people picking up PlayStation 5 for the first time that are going to want that Ultimate Edition that didn't play the original game. Like me. I'm, I'm the primary audience for that. It's just really baffling that when uh, you know Microsoft is doing so many pro-consumer things, and I know financially Sony can't match all the pro-consumer things Microsoft is doing, but they could tout content. And if you could tell content and you're being good to your 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 100 mil plus, you know, PlayStation 4 base by telling them, hey, you get a PlayStation 5. Like, you want to encourage people to buy PlayStation 5s. And I get that maybe Sony thinks they don't have to encourage because the sales are insane. And I'm sure they're going to sell another 100 million PlayStation 5s again. I mean, it's what Sony does. They're worth selling home consoles 80 million PlayStation 3s. Like, they're going to sell a ton of PlayStation 5s. I mean, they might be limited by stock this year, but it's... I just wish these companies could find a way to be as successful as they are, but also along the way, be more pro-consumer. And that's what really sucks about things like Microsoft, who is making all of the right pro-consumer moves. You can argue Bethesda is maybe one that, that isn't necessarily pro-consumer on the whole, but you understand why they would make a move like that. But everything else that they, they've done has been extremely pro-consumer. Yet... People don't seem more excited because they don't have the same kind of content at the moment promised coming. Sony's got the content, but I don't think we should just let content alone let these companies just get away with this stuff. There needs to be a bigger ruckus made. People, Not enough people are going to boycott or not buy a PlayStation 5 or not buy Miles around. Like, I, We only live once. Enjoy the games you want to enjoy. I'm not going to tell you to spend your money. But I am going to say something needs to change. With Sony, heck, maybe even Nintendo. Microsoft seems to already be on that path. It's time. Anyways, folks, I'm Nathan RoboJets from Nintendo Prime. You let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Do you even care? It's okay if you don't. <laughs> we have a lot of gaming topics on, on this channel, so, you know, not everyone's going to like every take I have. You guys have a good day.